we're going to jump right in and we're going to create a pivot table. All right. Now, the first thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that your data is selected. So we're just going to go ahead and take our mouse and select A1. Now the next thing is a pivot table is an object. So because it's an object, it's an insertable item that you put into Excel. So that means it's going to be on the Insert tab on our ribbon. So we'll go ahead and click on the Insert tab. And you're going to notice the very first icon in the Tables group says Pivot Tables. We're going to go ahead and take our mouse and click on Pivot Tables. Now a couple things are going to happen when you do this. First is you're going to notice there's some marching ants surrounding your data. So that's a good indicator that it is seeing your full list of data and the fields. However, you're also going to see that you have a pivot table dialog box. And on this, you, you want to note that there's a little collapse arrow here. If for some reason you're working with a range of data and you really don't want all of it, you can collapse your box and or just go reselect um, a target set of cells that you might want to create. So it doesn't necessarily have to always be the whole range. The second thing is you're going to see there's another, these are called radio buttons. You're going to see one that says use an external data source. Oftentimes people will use pivot tables from Excel to go and capture data from Access or from an, another Excel workbook and so on. So you would simply click here, you would activate the Choose Connection, and then it's going to give you an existing connection dialog box. And you can go from here to see if there's a pre-existing list. And if not, you can come down here to browse for more in the lower left-hand corner. And go and look for, let's say, an access database. Now this class, we don't cover that all the way to the source, but at least that puts you in the right direction to know that you can do that. So we'll go ahead and click and cancel everything on those windows. Now then the third button is going to be uh, choose where you want the pivot table report to be placed. Now to be real honest with you, you could place it on an existing worksheet. So if I were to click here, I might want to come over and select the cell here and then that would put my pivot table in line with my data, which is fine. But in this case, we're actually going to put it on a new sheet. So go ahead and click New Sheet Radio button and left click OK. And we have to go back to select range. <laughs> Forgot to do that. Ah, good lesson. So select the range and now do OK. The new worksheet will open and you will see your current pivot table structure, all right? So the first thing we want to do is we want to look at the top of our ribbon and you're going to see pivot table tools. This is called a contextual tab. This is new in 2007 and 10 applications because there are no more toolbars. So in the old versions, whenever we had an object, we had a toolbar, remember? Okay. In this version, because we do not have toolbars, any object is going to have a contextual tab. Okay? Now we have two tabs, options and design, that are associated with that contextual tab. So for right now, we'll stay on the options tab. And you'll see just like other ribbons, it has groupings and the button icons that are associated. And as we go along, we will cover most of those today. So let's start over on the right-hand side, and you're going to see that we have a pivot table field list. Now the good news is that is movable, so if you take your four-headed arrow and put it right on the title bar, and left-click, hold, and drag, you can reposition this. You can also use your sizer arrow and size it out, up, and down. So you can change the look of this pivot list, okay? Now, starting from the top, you're going to see there is a nice little drop-down menu in the upper right-hand corner. And I'm going to go ahead and click the arrow that opens that menu. 
And you're going to see here that you have field sections only, area sections, and so on. So you can click here and you can define how you want your pivot table to look. See what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. Your pivot table list. So if you don't want to see the fields below here, okay, if you only want to see this, okay, so you can just, this is just changing the look of your pivot table list, all right? Now, in order to add our fields, and notice that's what's populating our list, the four fields we had in our list data, okay? So what we're going to do is we're just going to click on the word program in our field list. So we'll go ahead and do that. And you're going to see that it now goes down and populates the row labels. Um, the pivot table field list, somehow I lost it. Okay, what you need to do is come over here and actually click on the pivot table. Oh, okay. I have a book. <laughs> yeah, um, and I'm glad you did that. Yeah. Watch what happens. This is an object. If you click off of an object, portions of it will go away, if not all of it. When you come over and click on the object again, it all comes oh, back. Okay. Yeah. By the way, Shannon, that's true with all objects. Okay. Anything that you do. Okay. All right. So now, go ahead and select the programs, just click on it, and you're now going to see that on the left-hand side of your pivot table structure, you now have the fields that are in the rows from our data. Now, if we just click on region, just click on it, you're going to see that also defaults to the row labels. Okay? However, I really don't want those there. I want them to be in my column. So all I have to do is come down to the row button, region, left click hold with my four headed arrow, and drag it up to the columns label. Mm -hmm. it has to be left click. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. The only time you'll use a right click, Shannon, is when you want to either drag and drop and copy something or if you want to look at a menu. Okay. Right click is usually for menus. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now let's take a look at our structure. So now you're going to see that we have our region field is now populating the top of our columns. Okay. Now the next thing we want to add is what's called our data value labels. And you're going to see if we come right over here to viewers and click on that, it's going to go right into the values section of our field list. The reason it's doing that is in our rod, in our data, it sees viewers as a number. So it sees that it's not text. So anything that's a calculatable value can go into values. Okay. Now, the other one we have here is called Report Filter. And what Report Filter does is it's used to filter data. Um, so we're going to go ahead and take period and drag it down to Report Filter. So once again, if I were to click on it, it would go into the row. We don't want that. We want it to go into the Report Filter. We now have a full pivot table. Okay, so now we're able to analyze the construction of our programs, of the regions that they're in, and the periods, in this case it's our quarters, and how many viewers, so notice it has a sum of viewers, all right? Now if you think about it, I'm just going to show you, we'll go back to sheet one for a second. If you were to just look at this data and someone said to you, I need to analyze all of my regions, how much, how many viewers we had for each quarter. Hmm. And then I need you to sum them. So a lot of people would say, oh, I can copy and paste it. Mm, yeah, you can. Sure. You can also do things like subtotals. You sure can. However, if we go back to sheet six again, it's only in a pivot table that you can slice and dice and twist and turn your data until you get it to the level of analyzation that you want. Okay? 
Are you okay on that so far? Yeah. All right. Now, the nice thing about this is I want to switch it around. So I think what I'd like to do is I'd like to have period underneath my program. So I'm just going to drag the report filter period down to the row in my field list box. So now you're going to see that it's stacked. So now it's not only has it broken it down by my region, but notice how it's showing me which quarters there was values. Okay. Now let's go ahead and take period and move it over to underneath region. And so now we're breaking down our programs, but we're now we're breaking down each region by the quarters. And then you'll also notice that they're giving you the totals for each one, for each program and for each quarter. Okay? And then let's go ahead now and take region and put it back over to report filter. And so now we've totally sliced and diced it and turned it around. <laughs> okay? You okay on that yep. so far? Mm -hmm. Are you getting the idea yeah. of how this works? Yeah.